let's just get right to it. So today I'm going to be talking about another book that I read in the early part of April, which is called Harp of Burma by Michio Takayama. Now, as you can see, this is a very thin book, very fast read, not really that hard to get into. I actually found myself glued to it the moment that I picked it up um, with a couple of dry spots as well. But let me just go ahead and talk about what the book is about. So the book is about a campaign of Japanese soldiers who are currently uh, in this state of limbo within the period or the late later periods of World War II. And as the novel is opened up, they are currently in the Bur the jungles of Burma, the jungles and mountain regions, tropics of Burma. You know what I'm saying? Like it's sweltering at this point. You know what I mean? But they're in this jungle, in limbo, don't know the status of Japan within this war and they're just wandering about. Unfortunately for them, there is a slew of dangers in the area. They have to be careful of other British troops. They have to be careful of some of the people of Burma, the more rebellious and violent people of Burma who go jumping into the trees and jumping out with shields and shanks and stuff to shank their ass down. And they have to be care and they have to survive. They have to survive this sweltering terrain. So they have three of those problems. And many more that I won't give away because they are misinformed, because they are running off, running low on supplies, and because they've already came across several other campaigns of Japanese soldiers who have been wiped out. They decide to use one particular soldier who happens to be a musician to perform these sort of um, reconnaissance missions where he go ahead of the troops to scout out the area. Now this soldier has two things going for him. First, he has a darker complexion than his comrades, so that gives him sort of this like aesthetic that's very similar to the people of Burma and two as I said he's a musician you know these soldiers use music to guide themselves through this whole scenario scenario that they're in trekking through the jungles of Burma looking for answers regarding Japan's fate so they use music to pump them up to go but because he is a musician and because he plays a harp and because he does have that complexion similar to the people of Burma so that allows him to like merge in as I said, they use him to go ahead, he scouts ahead, he goes on reconnaissance mission. Once he scouts the area, he uses the harp to signal to his comrades whether it's safe to go this passage or that passage back for what's ahead, what they have to look forward to, and just basically maneuvering their way through the jungles of Burma. Like I said, they have a lot that they can run into that could just send the, their whole campaign into peril. They've already witnessed the death and the mutilation of plenty of their other Japanese comrades who were in different campaigns. So this is their one saving grace within this whole situation. Now I'm gonna try not to spoil it here, but at one point in the book, very early on, that musician is separated from his campaign. Um, is very much a separation that is leaving a lot of questions and um, I can't give nothing else away. The three-fourths of the book is told in the, the omnipotent third person um, from a collective standpoint that narrative is basic consists basically of one Japanese soldier speaking as many. But then the last quarter of the book is told in a frame narrative um, driven specifically by the Japanese soldier who was a musician who ended up disappearing or finding a fate unknown. Anyway let's make this quick by getting into the pros and cons of the book that I enjoyed and did not enjoy. It's some of you may or may not know who've been watching my channel, you know that I do have a, an affinity for like Asian stories and Asian authors, particularly story Asian stories that take place in the early 20th century. I don't know why. I think it kind of bounces back to one of my favorite book, books, which is A Kitchen God's Walk by Amy Tan. Reading that book years and years ago, I first kind of bear witness to a lot of the disparaging positions that people in China uh, were placed in in the early 20th century, disparaging and depressing and all kinds of things. I did feel like Harper Burma did provide me or did speak to that affinity by providing, you know, a lot of cultural information on people, the people of Burma during this particular period, you know, World War II, as well as, you know, Japanese people as well, Japanese soldiers to be specific and, you know, their position within the war, as well as as, you know even the British soldiers who were populating the book so I really did enjoy that aspect I love flipping through pages and getting new cultural information um, a lot of times when I'm reading these books and there's something that's startling to me like sort of like the the, the, the topic of monks Burma you know the people of Mur Burma who are monks and their, their their traditions I find myself stopping reading the book to like research and look these particular things up and I really found myself doing a lot of that within Harper Burma. However, one of the cons I found was that the first three-fourths of the book was really, you know, in that omnipotent third-person narrative, it was a lot of 
ruminating and pondering about the faith of the Japanese musician who disappeared. You know, they wanted to know his faith and that sort of thing. So when you're reading these books and you're reading about the Japanese soldiers, you can kind of gather up that whole, like I said before, the whole uh, ideal of honor and, you know, closing doors, you know what I mean? Like giving, gathering conclusions and closing doors and, you know, riding on faith and riding on honor and that sort of thing. So, you know, they spent a lot or the author spent a lot of time sort of thinning that whole subject out until we did switch into that um, frame narrative where we, the reader, got the exact information regarding what happened to that musician who disappeared. So a lot of that was you know that three-fourths of the story was kind of stretching it out a little bit too long but nonetheless i did feel like the author was plugging in a lot of cultural information as he went along so that is what kept me reading so i wasn't so kind of bored with these soldiers sitting around in the dirt always talking about what happened to him is he here is he here is he here is he here he has to get home to his family he has to get home he, the book originally you know in written in japanese originally was written for uh japanese teens sort of to I don't know plug in this sense of heroism as it regards to Japan within the war you know take up the take up the mantle and go after you know the country that sort of thing a lot of that is kind of washed over the text but anyway that's it I'm gonna go I'm ready to go read a book that's what I'm ready to go do bye mm -hmm.